Hi, I'm Larry Black, and today we're looking back. About 20 years ago, I had an idea to get a room filled with country music people, singers, songwriters, put together 30 of them. They love to tell stories. They love to share with each other. And today, they get to share with you. This is Looking Back with Larry Black. Welcome back to Looking Back. One of the things that all of the country music shows used to have, they would always do a hymn or a gospel song. Well, I was flipping through some of our country's family reunion shows, and just for the heck of it, let's look at a couple of these classic gospel songs. Johnny Wright, I've been watching you and Miss Kitty sitting over there. Y'all know a lot of these old hymns and gospel songs, don't you? Oh, I'll tell you for sure we know a lot of them. We learned in Mount Juliet way back before they had automobiles. <laughs> you, you've told all the stories about, about y'all uh, dating and all that kind of stuff. Did y'all go to church together? Was that part of what you did when you were sparking Miss Kitty? Well, I, we never went together for a while, you know, because when I met Kitty, I wasn't going to church. <laughs> She changed that. She straightened she, you out? Yeah, Kitty straightened me out, you know. I, I, lived, I was born in Mount Julie. I was a kid, and I did go to church. But I met Kitty in Nashville, uh, what, back in the early 30s? And uh, we, we started dating and married in 1937. And she went to church every Sunday. And, and uh, she really taught me how to sing, what little I know about it. And uh, we, we'd get the old guitar and drive around. And I had an old... Uh, 31 Chevrolet, and uh, I, I taught her how to drive. She couldn't drive the car, but <laughs> we was going down the road one day, and I said, get in this automobile, get on my side here, and I'll get over there, and you drive this car, and she never driven it before. <laughs> and uh, boy, what a driver she was. <laughs> I wanted to stop at a grocery store and get us a cold drink, you know. So we pulled, I said, stop here, and she just wheeled in. Slid the wheels, threw rocks everywhere. Wait until he got right up to the place and said, pull in here. So I did what he That's when he started the church. All of a sudden. That's when he found religion. Yeah. He that's when they started to pray. That. Yeah. That, that's when I learned to pray. That's right. I, I, I said, so. oh, Lord. Help me that I may never ask her to drive again. <laughs> I, I can drive better than that now, though, a little better. <laughs> she drives now. We nicknamed her Dale Walter. We call her call D.W. Her D. When she comes well, I don't over. don't drive that fast. She comes over to the museum. We say, here comes D.W. <laughs> she wheel in. She wakes till she gets right to the place, then zip. Well, you taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> when Johnny and Jack were recording, y'all did some gospel things, didn't you? We sure did. We we did a lot of gospel songs, and and uh, we still do on the show every night. We feature two or three gospel songs. We'll have Kitty lead one, and then we'll all team up with her. And then I do. We do a lot of songs like uh, "He Will Set Your Fields on Fire" and "Father Along" and just a little talk with Jesus and different ones like that. But I usually do the lead on it, and and uh, Kitty get the high part, and then we have our son Bobby that does the bass. And we do a lot of them like that. And uh, well, you got a whole choir here with you today. Do a little bit of uh, just a little talk with Jesus. That's a all right. And we we always do a couple of verses, but I see there's three down here. We can do if you want to. We'll do uh, the first verse, and then have a little play out, and then come back and do the. Last one, I will try to do the third along with it. I may kind of mess it up a little, but we can take the mess out. Do what you want to do. Just enjoy. Yeah, well, I, we'll uh, start it off and let the band take it off, and then I'll come in here and do the the verse, and then everybody can pick it. It takes the bass in it, you know. You know how to sing it. Stonewall and get the bass on it. Jimmy Ed. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And just a little talk with Jesus set me soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Just a little talk with Jesus. Let us 
tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel the prayer of turning and you know the fire is burning, you will find the talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have down some fears, my eyes may fill with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Feel the prayer of turning and know the fire is burning. You will finally talk with Jesus, makes it right. Oh, and a favorite of a lot of the country music artists was this song by Ira Stanfield, Supper Time. Here's Stu Phillips. <laughs> Many years ago in days of childhood I used to play till evening shadows come Then winding down an old familiar pathway Well I heard my mama call that set of some sing on Come home, come home, it's supper time The shadows lengthen fast Come home, come home, it's supper time We're going home at last one day, beside her bedside, I was kneeling And angel wings were winnowing the air Ah, oh, she heard the call of supper time in heaven And now I know she's waiting for me there Shadows lengthen fast Come home, come home, it's supper time We're going home at last Little turnaround In vision now, I see her standing yonder And her familiar voice I hear once more She heard the call of supper time in heaven And now I know she's waiting for me there Come home, come home, it's 
supper time The shadows lengthen fast Come home, come home, it's supper time Who can forget Martha Carson? Martha Carson and Satisfied. Boy, I want to tell y'all, I grew up near Atlanta, Georgia. And about 12, 15 every day on WSB radio, I would turn my radio on to hear James and Martha Carson. Used to sign on singing, Keep on the Sunny Side. Oh, and some of the greatest gospel. Martha Carson is, is a true legend in gospel music. I am so glad you are here with us. I've got to tell, I've got to tell, you, I've got to tell you all this little story. I was raised in a church, brought up, and, and made me go to the church, and I just hated to go. Because uh, me and my two sisters started out singing together. We were the first all-string girl band in country music. But, of course, we never made the name. We never got anybody pushing us along. But that was Jean Chapel and my sister Minnie and myself. And we worked with the Coon Creek girls in Renfro Valley and then uh, quite a while there. But we would sit on our front porch and sing, you know, and practice our little harmony and everything. Well, the preacher came up to this little church our mommy made us go to. And he said, girls, you need to quit playing them instruments. He said, you know, it's a sin to play instruments in church. And I started looking in my Bible. And I started up in a little argument with him right away. Because if Gabriel's going to be blowing his trumpet and the angels are going to be playing the harps, somebody's telling the truth somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, I studied, I studied about this, but we weren't able to, to play our guitars in, in church. But soon after we left there, I went to one of these good old missionary Baptist churches, and I'll tell you what, the power fell down. And when I, when I was saved, I'm going to tell you something. I was a happy Christian. I couldn't stand these sad singing and slow riding songs. <laughs> and so that's the truth. I had, to, I had to sing them happy. And the way I look at it today is if you're a Christian and you ain't happy, you better go back and get another dose. <laughs> I tell you, you really. So I guess I was one of the bravest, bravest persons around because uh, my grandfather taught, taught us the shape notes the door Dore means. That's the way I write all my music. I dare anybody to ever try to steal a song of mine because you'll never know. It looks like rabbit tracks when I get through with it. You never know what the time I wrote it in or anything. But uh, I wrote this song soon after, after I was saved and had gone through a turmoil in, with the duet that you were talking about. This is a, this is, y'all would bring the skeletons out of the closet, wouldn't you? No, but I just don't okay. tell you how, how much no, no, I enjoyed okay. those, those. We skeletons. did. We had a real good duet. But he quit believing in the Lord. And so that's where we had to part company because I sing from my heart what I believe, you know, and I thought, this is terrible to stand up here and sing, be a hypocrite like this. And I'm as much a hypocrite as he is for singing with him if he don't believe there's a, in the Lord. So we part company. Put that microphone on the stand there and give us some Martha Carson music. We need, we need to hear some of this. we're going to have to raise this thing up. I never could do nothing sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey. Hey. hey, Jack, you know this one, too. And well, I'll tell you what, it takes a bunch to hold the microphone for her, don't you? Anyway, I'm going to tell you a little bit of how I wrote the song. The, the, uh, I had lived with this man for nine years after doctors had told me if I didn't get away from him, I was going to have a nervous breakdown. But when he departed faith in the Lord, and we did break up, but I had lived with him all those years because the fans out there, we were so popular, they had named their children, James and Martha, all over the state of Georgia. You remember that? So, and then the children named their pets, James and Martha. Cats and dogs, everything. Really. <laughs> old old so, James turned out to be a dog. Huh? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, here's what I, but see, instead of, 
instead of leaving him when the doctor told me to, I stayed to keep from hurting any of my fans. Yeah. I, I thought, Lord, if they love us good enough to be naming, naming their children and their pets after us, I, I can't hurt them like that. So I stayed on and suffered it out as long as I could. And uh, so then we parted company when we'd gone to the midday merry-go-round. And uh, he would just embarrass me on the stage, you know. It was very sarcastic and all that. So me and Bill Carlisle was starting across the Great Smoky Mountains and my sister Jean and her husband, Sally Holmes. And he says, now get, be sure and get out here and let's be ready to leave right after the merry-go-round because, you know, we want to get there early so we can learn some new songs for the merry-go-round the next day. So I said, okay. But I was the last one getting out there. People would stop me and talk to me. Yeah, I'm just like a woman. I love to talk. You I know? tell. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, when I got out to the car, my sister and brother-in-law and Bill Carlisle were all in this little huddle. And I think, boy, they're giving me the devil. I felt inferior anyway because I'd never sung a solo in my life. And uh, I said, well, I said, I know I'm the last one out here, and I'm sorry. But they said, that wasn't what we was talking about. And so I said, well, what did you hush so quick for when I walked up? You know, I ain't no Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, well, no, listen. Well, you know they look plum guilty. So they look plum guilty. Now, I don't mean anything by that. I mean, my mommy didn't raise no idiot. <laughs> no, see, but anyway, you all quit that. You all quit that. Carson, you got to sing. Well, no, wait you got to sing. Well, let me tell you then. Okay. So we started across she, the Great Smoky Mountains. She going to finish. Okay. I'm over, it ain't long, the rest of it. I'm oh, over the worst. Okay. I'm over the worst. The rest feels good. <laughs> so I, we got in the car, and Bill Carlisle told me what it was they were talking about. Some woman had come from a little town out of Knoxville and come up there because I had st stood up there knowing I couldn't sing so low and was trying to, the boss had asked me to stay on. So I had sung a solo, and she came up there and says, well, I'm just going to tell you, if you ever book a show in Morristown, Tennessee, and Martha Carson's on it, there won't be nobody come out to see it. Well, boy, I've never been a crybaby, but here they come. I bawled all the way from Knoxville to Gatlinburg, halfway up the Smoky Mountains, and all of a sudden, God spoke to me, and he said, Martha, why are you crying? I'm satisfied, and you're satisfied. And that's how I wrote the song. Now well, I'm ready to sing. In the key of A, y'all. Let's give her a hand. I think that's great. Yeah. You want to kick it off, fellas? <laughs> Here we go, everybody. Here we go. I've got that old time religion. Got that old time religion. That is why I'm satisfied. You ask me if I'm happy. If I have. Peace within. If I'm worried about tomorrow, when I reach my journey's end, well, I'm satisfied with my Jesus. When he knocks, I'll let him in. You go with me through the valley, for I know he is my friend. Take me and they turn me from their door. If they sow no seeds of kindness, make the thorns in my path grow. Well, it won't matter over yonder when I reach that other side. For I'm gonna sit down by my Jesus, satisfied.
Well, I hope you're satisfied now. And don't forget to come back next week. We'll have more Looking Back with Larry Black. And remember to remember. Oh, you may want to subscribe too.